Good evening, I'm Prarambh Bhadahal. Let's begin with the main stories. Increase in mercury affects daily lives in Tharaima, this region. Temperature reaching record levels even in the mountainous district. Daily wage workers worst affected. Lack of trust persists among political parties despite clearance of obstruction at the parliament. Impact of central uncertainty seen also at the provinces. 14 Hong Kong pro-democracy activists found guilty and two acquitted in a landmark subversion trial that critics say could deal another blow to the city's rule of law. And government shows interest towards construction of cricket infrastructures in the country. Ministry for Youth and Sports and the National Sports Council say construction works at TU to begin next week. Highest temperature of the year was recorded in a few cities of the Tarai region today. Mercury read 44.1 degrees Celsius in Dhangadi and Nepal Ganj, while temperature was higher than 40 degrees in most of the Rai districts. Local residents of these districts barely ventured outside during the day because of excessive heat. The temperature has created challenges for daily waste workers who struggle to make ends meet. In addition to Tharai and Inner Madhis region, public life has also been affected in hilly districts including the Kathmandu Valley. Senior citizens, children and women in their pregnancies have also been affected. Industries, factories and schools have remained closed because of excessive heat. The local residents of the right districts have said that the public have been bearing the brunt because of the government failure to ensure cold drinking water and cooling centers for commuters. In our public voice segment, we have asked in several provinces how have they been going about their lives amid the heat. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. घर परिवार चलाने को लायक यार मेरे दुख कर रहा बाद इस तरह भर अपनी बहुत साल में काम कर रहे कुछ इस बार समझा रहा इस बार ताल का चौक पड़ा हूँ एक साल बाहर खाऊँ ना बयान बिल का स्वागत था ही बने बहुत सोने ना नहीं आने बात इल्ल गया रहा ना भर रहा तो मेरे को खोल खोल पसीना आ रहा है उ कोसेरी बस ने बात ना घरों भेज रहा सर गांव कोनी छाई ना बाजार में आदमी ये छाई ना भेज गर्मी छाई ले बेपार तो इल्ल पूरे थप्पो पर ऐसा गर्मी को कारण ले काम ना करी तो उधर ही भाई ना काम करने ही पर सा जो जाती नहीं गर्मी भाई पनी सारे गर्मी जो और काम तो गर्मी पर गर्मी धीरे गर्मी चा Obstructions at the Parliament have cleared following formation of the Parliamentary Proof Committee to investigate the fraud of cooperatives. However, questions remain regarding if it has put to bed the crisis in the current ruling coalition and added efforts for formation of a new alliance. Dilemma of the ruling coalition has surfaced after Prime Minister Pushakamal Tahal clarified that CBN Unified Socialist would not exist, exit the current alliance. Prime Minister Pushakamal Dahal, meeting main opposition Nepali Congress President Sher Badr Dewa at his residence in Budanil Kamtha, all parties reaching a consensus on formation of a parliamentary proof committee and member of the ruling coalition, CPN Unified Socialist Chairperson Madhav Kumar Nepal, holding parleys with opposition parties, is being seen with great significance in the political sphere. Nepal holding talks with opposition parties is an evidence to the turmoil in the ruling coalition. Despite the uncertainty among the parties on investigating Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Home Affairs, Ravi Lamichane now resolved, doubts persist regarding the fraud of cooperatives as this issue could surface again during the probe. While Lamichane's name has not been included, the probe committee has the jurisdiction of investigating Gorkha Media, which the Home Minister has been associated with. While Nepali Congress could draw Lamichane into the investigations, such an attempt would not be acceptable to CPNUML. If that happens, the ruling coalition is certain to face problems. Meanwhile, Nepali Congress is making all possible efforts to split the current ruling coalition. The main opposition seems to have grown closer to Prime Minister Dahal in context of probe into the fraud of cooperatives. Nepali Congress has also maintained positive relations with CPN Unified Socialist. Statements from Congress leaders regarding possible collaboration with Maoist Center are evidence to the dilemma inside the ruling coalition. When Nepali Congress and CPNUML were making allegations against each other on the fraud of cooperatives, Maoist Center and Unified Socialist preferred to remain silent. Offer of the role of Prime Minister made to Unified Socialist Chair Nepal also shows that there are problems in the ruling coalition. 
Another unified socialist leader, Dhalanath Khanal, reached Balwatar to hold talks with Prime Minister Dahal on Wednesday morning. The split of Janata Samajwadi Party Nepal because of dilemma inside the ruling coalition shows that the political course has not come to a pause. The recent developments have shown that the Game of Thrones remains to conclude. No party has a clear majority at the parliament. Political equation has changed three times in a short period of 17 months, while the Prime Minister has had to generate the vote of confidence four times already. While all parties are concerned about the possible change in political equation at any time, none of them accept it in an open manner. Members of Unified Socialist, which is in the government led by the Hal, have been claiming that Nepal would soon be appointed the Prime Minister, which is another evidence to issues in the alliance. If we are to borrow the words of Prime Minister Dahal, political turmoil will continue until he exists and that he would leave no stone unturned to retain power. Such statements from the Prime Minister mean that the lack of trust among the parties will continue to remain. Provincial politics has been increasingly unstable because of the political gambits at the centre, raising the risk of a constitutional crisis. There have been instances where disputes related to formation of provincial governments have reached to courts and verdicts have been handed out where the judiciary has specified names of particular people to be appointed as the chief ministers. The writ filed against the formation of the government at Koshi province is still in consideration at the court while a mandamus was issued to form the Gandaki province government. Likewise, political parties have been busy in meetings at Madhya province, making and breaking partnerships in a bid to save the government. None of the governments in seven provinces have been running in an efficient manner. The Supreme Court sacked Gandaki province Chief Minister Khagaraz Adhikari from CPNUML following a writ that was filed against the votes given to him during his floor test. Nepali Congress's Surendra Raj Pandey is having a hard time preparing for his own vote of confidence as the Chief Minister as Supreme Court issued a mandibus to appoint him to the post. The province governments have pending tasks like announcing policies and programs and the budget for the next fiscal on 15th of July. Just like Gandaki, the politics in Koshi province has also been unstable. CPNUML's Hikmat Kumar Karki, who is the sixth chief minister, faces a writ filed by former chief minister Kedar Karki. This has pushed the fate of the province government to uncertainty. Elsewhere, the Madhya province government has been pushed to minority after CPNUML and Maoist senator withdrew the support. The provincial politics has been pushed to instability as the ruling partners at the centre and Chief Minister of the province, Saros Kumar Yadav, are doing all possible legworks for the government. In Bagmati, although the Chief Minister has remained the same, the ruling equation has kept changing. Ministers have been splitted and provincial committees added for power share. In Lumini, incumbent Chief Minister Jok Bahadur Mora from Mao's centre is the third Chief Minister. He has split ministries just to maintain a balance in power share while adding burden on the state coffers. In case of Karnali province, the government has seen two Chief Ministers. CPNUML's Yamlal Khandel has been appointed to the post, however he has not been able to give full shape to his cabinet. In Sudhir Pashtim, CPN Unified Socialist Dirga Bahadur Sodari is the fourth chief minister. However, CPN UML has been posing challenges to the government as it is, uh, has rather reservations against CPN Unified Socialist Chair Madhav Kumar Nepal. Meanwhile, the government works remain stranded in all these provinces and the current scenario has raised questions on the sentiments of federalism. It is now time for our segment Public Polls where you text us with your opinion. Public Polls. Before we ask today's question, let us take a look at the result from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we asked, why have those issued arrest warrant against for the alleged involvement in the irregularities related to the land of Parliament that has still not been held? 45% were for A, home administration unwilling, 32% were for B, political influence, 23% were for C, investigation underway. Here is our today's question. What do you term the statement of Prime Minister Prashakamal Dahal on another revolution in the brewing? Your options are A, having flashbacks of revolution, B, outcome of failure, and C, effort to keep others confused. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001. It is now time for a short break, but for more news, to stay with us. Pre-monsoon expedition season of Mount Everest is about to conclude. Many mountaineers have made records this season. In addition to trained and experienced mountaineers, many tourists across different age and countries have reached the Everest Base Camp this season. Such diverse demography of those hiking and trekking in the Everest region is an evidence to the fact that adventure is not just for the youth. Highest mountain of the world, Mount Everest is a dream destination for most people of the world. Everest is a dream, an adventure and an accomplishment. 
Tourists from across the world reach the Everest Base Camp with the objective of reaching the highest peak of the world or the least of making it to the base camp to have a close-up view of Everest. Located at an altitude of 5,364 meters above the sea level, the Everest Base Camp witnesses the footfall of people from different parts of the world across different age groups. I am coming with my father, mother and my brother. We are in a whole family and I am 10 years old and I am coming back, back from EBC. The Everest Base Camp can be reached after an 8-day trek from Lukla. The enthusiasm and excitement injects energy among everyone. This enthusiasm and excitement lasts until the return to Lukla after making it to the base camp. Tourists of all age groups can be found with such energy. I'm from Seattle, Washington in the United States. I also am 65 years old. We're on a quest to conquer these beautiful mountains in the Himalayas. Everyone has been delightful, uh, engaging, lovely, welcoming. Age is not an hindrance to energy. Those who embark on a new journey can only relish the beauty of the destination. During the process, they learn new languages and become aware about the geography. This adds more value to the experience. It was a really good experience. It was really cold, but not that hard. Hiking and trekking are not the only targets of reaching the destination. They are also the processes of weaving memories along the way and gathering more courage while witnessing the beauty of the immaculate views. Therefore, let A's not be an obstacle for us to reach the Everest Base Camp at least for once in our lifetime. Sports News At a time when the Nepal men's national cricket team are making final preparations for the 2020 Cricket World Cup, the government has shown interest for construction of cricket infrastructures. Budget for the upcoming fiscal year has also prioritized cricket stadiums. Thrivan University International Cricket Grounds has made great contributions for Nepal's journey to the World Cup. With the success earned by the players, the venue has drawn attention of the government as well. The government has included Mulpani Cricket Stadium, Gautam Buddha Cricket Stadium, Fapla Cricket Ground and Girisa Prasad Cricket Stadium alongside the TU International Cricket Ground in the budget. Minister for Youth and Sports Biraz Vakta Shrestha and National Sports Council Member Secretary Tonkalal Ghising took stock of the Thrivan University International Cricket Grounds and said that required construction works would begin next week.